Hey, welcome to the Paisley Couch. I was taught at a young age to always be prepared. Some might call it the Boy Scout influence in me, or perhaps it was just the kind of parents that raised me. So today I want to talk a little bit about my backpack and what I keep in it wherever I'm going in my day-to-day -day life. So here's the backpack. I got it recently, recently being like three years ago, off of the interwebs. And it's a uh, anti-theft backpack. I really like this backpack. It wasn't that expensive, it was a cheap deal. It doesn't have a brand name on it. I think other distributors will actually buy this backpack and put a brand name on it and sell it. But I found the manufacturer, I believe. I believe it's the manufacturer's site. Maybe it's a wholesaler site that buys it off of a manufacturer somewhere probably in China. But I like this backpack quite a bit. And it's a theft backpack, meaning that it's very hard to slice it open so it's knife resistant on the outside. It's got a couple of these side pockets, just two on both sides here and here. Right up close to the camera there. These handy little side pockets where I just keep non-valuable things. It's got some reflectors right here on the back, and it's packed full of stuff at the moment. I'm probably putting way too much stuff in the backpack, more than it's actually rated to carry, but it's been holding up okay so far. But right here you notice that it's got some uh, rips inside of it, I mean where uh, the padding is on the shoulders and right there. And that's easily fixed with a little bit of thread and a little bit of love, which I'll put into it eventually at some point. But I have to say, this backpack is incredibly comfortable. And this isn't a review on the backpack, I'm just showing you what kind of backpack I have. It's very, very comfortable on the back. And one of my favorite parts about it is it has this down low lumbar support with yet another big wide pocket, which I generally keep my planner in or at least a little notebook where I keep ideas. But I've moved all those notebooks inside here. I've been keeping a bunch of like little notebooks around so I can write down ideas because you never know when the muse is gonna come and visit you. So what's inside the backpack? What's inside the backpack? I didn't clean up my backpack before making this video, so we're gonna see what's actually inside of here. Uh, right on top we have my inhaler. I've never had an inhaler before up until last week. I went to a doctor and the doctor wrote me a number of different scripts for my lung problems I'm having, my breathing issues and my phlegm production. The doctor came to the conclusion after asking me a number of different questions that it's probably due to allergies, the reason why I'm having difficulty breathing and why I have all this excess mucus production and all of that. I've had problems breathing my whole life, but it's been getting a lot worse the past couple years. At any rate, he recommended that I try an abuterol inhaler and it helps a little bit. It doesn't necessarily open up everything for me. There's still always some sort of like phlegmy blockage. It's really disgusting. I'll save you the details, but I was happy to finally get an inhaler because any little bit can help a lot when you're having trouble breathing. So safety first. We have this right here. This is where I keep my GoPro. I have a GoPro Hero 7, I believe is the model. Uh, it was a little cheaper than all the newer models, so I went with it and it's got really good reviews for what it is. I got some third party hardware and a third party uh, accessories pack, which was really cool. For 40 bucks, I got all sorts of really cool stuff like a waterproof housing, a number of different mounts, a number of different places where I can like stick it to things. I got a cute little tripod to go with it. It's pretty neat. And an extra battery. So whenever I'm out on the go and on the road and I'm doing a drive and vibe video or if I'm out somewhere else, I can use my GoPro to film things instead of my camera phone. And it gives me just a little bit better sound and video quality. So I keep that with me wherever I'm going because I'm posting every single day on YouTube. I gotta be prepared. And I was a Boy Scout. The Boy Scout motto is be prepared. You gotta be prepared no matter what you're doing, no matter where you're going. You want to be ready for whatever life throws at you. What else is inside the backpack? Well, oh yeah, I just got this. This is a Samson uh, wireless mic system. And I got it so I can use it at the Michigan Renaissance Festival. Uh, it was highly recommended by a dear friend of mine who is a talented, amazing, just astounding, unparalleled, world-class magician, Alexander. And that's his mug right there. AlexanderTheMagician.com. You can go to his website and you can see what he's all about. If you're looking for a magician in the Michigan area, that's the magician you want to get. Bar none. Hands down. Amazing, amazing stuff. Anyways, I've worked a couple jobs with him and he had this neat wireless headset right here. It looks like this. You put it inside of your ear. It's got this tan bendable unit right here that holds the tip of the mic. So when you attach it to your ear, it's not as distracting as say like having a black line with a black tip mic. So I like that it's uh, more or less my flesh colored, so that's cool for me. And it's got a wireless transmitter so you can plug it into your amplifier or to your PA system. And it worked out really good when I used it before, but unfortunately I couldn't get it to work for me at the Michigan Renaissance Festival. So 
I might have to resort to uh, reading some literature at some point and figuring out how this thing goes. And I'd love to do a review on this product at a later date once I get it working for me. I've used it before when Alexander and I did a gig once again. He let me use his wireless headset and it was very, very easy to use. It had uh, a wonderful range. I could walk away very far away and the quality was superb. Right now I'm currently using a $60 wireless unit I bought off of a website that shall not be named. And it's been treating me very well for the past couple years at the Michigan Renaissance Festival. At least the past couple years it's been open. And I'll do a review on that as well. Maybe I'll do a side-by-side. -side. Who knows? What else is inside the backpack? Oh, we have my Tribit noise-canceling headphones. I did a review on these already, and I like them so much I keep them with me no matter where I'm going. In case I go to the gym, I can pull them out, connect them Bluetooth to my phone, or I can even plug them into something else with a standard headphone jack. I like them very much. They fold down nice and neat. They come in this nice hard shell case to keep them nice and secure. And boom, there you go. There's your noise canceling headphones, which you can use while you're at the gym or if you're just taking a hike and you want some music or if you are producing electronic music. I like using them when I'm producing electronic music because I can hear the music a lot more vividly than just coming out of my computer speakers. I like them. I think they're a quality product. They're actually manufactured by sound engineers, so that's cool. What else is inside the backpack? This is very important and a cornerstone of my backpack is my hygiene kit. I don't leave home without a hygiene kit anymore. I have bad teeth. I've been trying to maintain them very well for the past 10 years or so. I was born with pretty good teeth and I didn't have the best oral hygiene growing up, but that's all changed the past 10 years. I've been trying to put more and more emphasis on taking care of my chompers. And something I got out of 2020 when we all had to put on masks was I had the privilege ugh, of smelling my own breath a lot more often because of the uh, mask I had to wear on my face. Now I'd usually brush my teeth once or twice a day. Now I brush them at least twice a day and I floss as well after every single meal because I have food traps all in there. This might be too much information, but it's important to floss, kids. Anyways, I carry my toothbrush, my toothpaste, my deodorant, some shampoo. <laughs> And I also carry some soap, toenail clippers, Q-tips, and other personal hygiene products that I like to keep around. Maybe like some uh, lotion. When I get out of the shower, I like to uh, make sure that my face is nice and moisturized and all of that. Actually, let's see what's inside here. What else did I miss? Oh yeah, mouthwash. Mouthwash is very important because I've discovered it's not so much the sugar that eats away the enamel on your teeth, so much as the waste of the bacteria. So the bacteria in your mouth eat the sugar and their waste, or their fecal matter, is very, very acidic and it eats away at the enamel on your teeth. So, if you use mouthwash before you go to bed, you will better protect your mouth from cavities and from tooth decay. I got some hand sanitizer in here, some antihistamines. I even have some charcoal tablets in order to remove any toxins from my body. If you believe in that sort of thing, I think some people think the whole charcoal tablet thing is bogus, but I like using it because whenever I'm doing fire performances and I'm breathing in, in those fumes, I like to think it helps me by pulling out some toxins in my body and absorbing it into the charcoal. At the very least, charcoal is a good source of iron, so they say. So whatever, I keep my charcoal tablets on me, safety first. I got some tooth whitening strips, yeah, some Q-tips and some more hand sanitizer, and that's my hygiene kit. Boom, put it over there. Oh, I like to keep my tablet on me. I have a tablet inside of here. It's a Lenovo 10-inch uh, tablet I got years ago, and it's still holding strong. I like this thing. It had a really good rating for battery life, and was incredibly durable. It's a little heavier than uh, what most people might like, a little thicker once you put this protective uh, cover on it. But hey, it treats me well. I like to read my ebooks on this, PDF files, and I like to play Go. Go is an ancient Asian strategy game that's played on a 19 by 19 grid with black and white stones. I'm in completely in love with it. I'll play it until the day I die. I'm addicted to Go. I try to play a little bit every single day if I can. Life has been really nuts for me lately. I haven't been able to play as much Go as I want to, but the screen is big enough on this and it's got very good speakers for what it is too. So I can watch maybe some streaming shows on this. I can listen to some music. I can play Go, all sorts of fun stuff. So I keep my tablet on me. It's nice to have. Oh yeah, we have my planner. So I usually keep a smaller planner on me, but I purchased a larger planner recently because so many more things are happening in my life. I like ink on paper when it comes to planners. I'm just old fashioned that way. I'm trying to get in the habit of using an online planner that other people can see and I can share plans with other people. Technology is just too much for me sometimes and I just like good old fashioned ink on paper when it comes to keeping my plans in order. 
when I write it down, I can remember it a lot easier than if I type it in place. This little one I'm probably gonna get rid of. I'm probably gonna move over to the big one because it's a lot harder to lose a bigger planner and it's not as easy to carry around in your pocket, but I have a backpack no matter where I go, so that's cool. What else do we got in here? Oh, I like to keep an auxiliary battery with me wherever I go. It goes great with this particular backpack because this particular backpack happens to have a little USB plug right here and the plug goes inside of the backpack and you can connect an auxiliary battery that can charge your phone about two and a half times. So I can plug this little bad boy inside of my anti-theft backpack, lock it up, keep it on my back, and then I can plug my phone into the outside port right here to charge my phone without having to worry about my thing getting stolen. And you never know when the power is going to go out. It's nice to have one of these around. I also have my ring binder just full of larger size notebooks where I keep a lot of information in here. When you're a caregiver for people, you have to keep track of a certain amount of paperwork to make sure that you're turning in your hours accurately, that you're recording the amount of mileage you're driving accurately, and so on and so forth. And I also like to keep a number of other things inside of here for personal reasons too. I like to write down lists of lists and lists of the things that I made a list for and lyrics for songs. I like to write down smart, funny one-liners, concepts for videos I have to make on YouTube, all sorts of stuff. Writing is a very, very important part of my life and it's becoming more and more important as I'm getting older because my memory isn't as good as it used to be when I was younger and I'm not as clever as I used to be. So I have to write down all the little clever things that come to my mind and then later on decide if they're still clever. So we got a couple of notebooks in here for different reasons. Oh, I have a bunch of lyrics. I'm trying to practice these tongue twisting hip hop lyrics. This one's a song called Kiln by Hail Mary Malon, which is a hip hop group that has one of my favorite hip hop artists, Aesop Rock in it. And this is the lyrics to that song. I really like the song, so I'm trying to learn it and sing along with it. It's a pretty tricky track to keep up with, so I had to get the lyrics printed out here. Another one is a song called Take My Hand by Dark Time Sunshine which is another hip hop trio, which has Aesop Rock in it, or at least was invited into it for this particular piece. And this was a really good song also, so I had to print up lyrics for that. Take Me to the Basement by Aesop Rock, another really good song, really good track. It's probably not something a lot of you would appreciate listening to, but the lyrics are really, really awesome. And None Shall Pass, probably Aesop Rock most popular song he ever written. The way he weaves his words and reads his rhymes together is utterly amazing, just completely astounding. Klutz by Aesop Rock, another really impressive song, it was really an original track. It was kind of like a stream of consciousness rant the whole time. There wasn't a chorus. There wasn't a bridge. It was a really good delivery of bars, very poetic. And of course, Aesop Rock's Daylight and Nightlight. He wrote this song called Daylight, which was another one of his very popular tracks. And the song Nightlight was the exact same song, but he switched up little bits of the lyrics inside. So it was very stimulating to listen to if you were really used to listening to Daylight. And you listen to Nightlight after it, it blew your mind for the second time. It was really sweet. Oh, and then here's my certificate of liability insurance. I'm an entertainer by trade, and it's important to have an insurance policy in case something goes wrong during a performance. If you're hired to do a gig and you have to be entertaining a large group of people and you're doing something that's risky, that puts yourself at risk or the audience at risk, it's important to have an insurance policy to protect you and to protect your things and protect property of other people and protect yourself from hurting other people's feelings even. It's incredibly important to have an insurance policy as an entertainer. This one happens to be a $5 million policy. No, this is a $2 million policy. I toned down my policy because I've never had to make a claim. I doubt that I'll have to make a claim, but I still feel the need to have an insurance policy because it makes you look a lot more professional to the client who's hiring you, and it also gives you a little bit of peace of mind knowing that you have some coverage in case some accident happens that was outside of the realm of your control. Anyways, I digress. That's another thing I have inside of here. Oh, I have my Mindscape Talents Performer Contract Agreement. Sometimes I get contacted by people to put together entertainment packages, and this is just a contract that I use to protect myself if I hire someone else to work with me. Contracts are important. I recommend that you get a contract whenever you have an agreement with someone, even if it's a friend or a family member. It's important that things are black and white and easy to understand, and that everyone understands what's happening with the exchange of time and money and talents. We should all be on the same page whenever we're doing something. It just makes sense. So if someone doesn't want to have a contract or they're trying to say, hey, we don't need a contract, you probably need to use a contract. If they don't use contracts for the deals that they make, then that's on them, but you should have a contract for whenever you do a deal when you're doing business. All right, anyways, yeah, that's my ring binder, and that's my unsolicited advice if you plan on being an entertainer or doing business if you're a contractor. Get a contract if you're a contractor. What else do we got in here? We got some 
Oh, postage stamps, old fashioned snail mail postage stamps. I got a number of those because I have this idea that I want to keep writing more letters by hand to people that I love and admire and respect, family members and friends and so on. I think it's pretty neat to get a letter in the mail from a friend or a family member that's handwritten. There's just something so much more organic and genuine and loving about it. And I bought some stamps just so I could do that. What else do we have here? Oh, I got some tip money from when I was working at the Renaissance Festival. I guess I stashed that in here. I'm rich. Oh, more postage stamps. <laughs> well, I got purple heart forever stamps. I like my forever stamps because I like knowing if I buy one that they'll be good a couple years later because sometimes it takes me a long time to get through a book of stamps. Oh, my old cell phone. I like to keep this around because it's got a perfectly good camera in it and it also doubles as an MP3 player and a little mini computer. So I keep my old cell phones around. They're pretty useful. What else have we got here? Oh. I like to have a headlamp just in case the light goes out. What else we got in here? Another little notebook. I keep a number of these little notebooks. In fact, I probably have a couple more in here. Two more in here with an extra pen. An older cell phone. I have this cell phone in here because once again, it has another camera on it. Another bunch of notes because I store notes digitally also. I know what you're thinking. I should probably consolidate all these notes together. But hey, it's organized chaos with me. At least I know where my information is. And yes, I do need to compile everything together, maybe store it on a cloud, and maybe even keep a backup hard copy for myself, maybe on an external hard drive. Oh, and I have one of those too. Let's see if I have that in here. Oh, one more little notebook. Charging cord, as well as a power cell rapid charge, plug in the wall housing thing. I don't know. It's got two USB plugs in it in case I want twice the fast charge power. I can do that. With all these extra cell phones inside this backpack, it's probably good that I can keep them charged up good. And my newest cell phone has USB Type-C charging cord, which is different than all the other cell phones I've ever owned, and it's really cool. I was wondering why everyone switched over to USB-C. It's because your phone charges like a lot faster. I can charge my phone from like 50% up to 100% in a matter of an hour, hour and a half probably. So I'm loving this thing. Oh yeah, and this is probably my most favorite external hard drive I've ever owned. This is a Samsung portable SSD T5 portable hard drive. I'm gonna do a review on this in the future. This thing's amazing. Yes, this is a one terabyte portable hard drive. It's super fast speed. I love this thing. I pulled all the information off my old computer when it died. I had to put it in safe mode because it just had a problem with maybe I think with the graphics card or something like that, but it would still boot up in safe mode and I was able to save all of my data in this super lightweight external hard drive. I love it, I keep it with me wherever I go and I can still access everything on my old computer right here on this little hard drive. And it's very fast too, I plug it in, it's got the fastest USB. The solid state drive though, it's incredibly fast. It does have a little bit of a lag to it, but it's not as slow as any other hard drive of her own. So. I give it an A-plus rating because it's the best thing I've ever had. Well, I think that just about concludes what's in my backpack. Like I said, I like to be prepared no matter what I'm doing. I like to be ready to write down any notes of anything I have going on in my brain that it might be a good idea. I like to write down if I need to buy something from the store. I like writing things down. In fact, I need to write things down. It's the only way I can get things done with my chaotic brain and how it works. If you're no stranger to my channel, you know how many side tangents I can go on whenever I'm trying to do a simple video like what's in my backpack. I start talking about Aesop rock lyrics and all these different products I like using. What's up with that? Anyways, folks, I post way too much here on YouTube. I post every single day for the year of 2021, and I've done us both a favor. I've organized all my content I've made for the year of 2021 into different playlists so you can check those playlists out and make it easier for you to find something that may pique your interest. Anyways, folks, it's time for me to let you go. I've talked your ear off long enough. I gotta put all this stuff back in my backpack. I gotta count up all these tips I got from the Renaissance Festival I forgot that I even had in my backpack. Life's not bad. I'm finding money in places I didn't remember I even had it. Sometimes it pays to be a little squirrely. Please remember to check out my playlist section once again where you can check out my circus and flow arts tutorials I post once a week every Sunday or Monday morning and I teach you how to teach yourself things like this. This is the art of contact juggling and yes you can do it with anything round if you put the time and patience and practice into learning it and if you have the physical ability to do so. You might be surprised. You might be able to actually pick this up faster than you would imagine. When it comes to contact juggling people look at it and they think I can never do something like that. Keep this in mind. If you're contact juggling it's easier to do than regular juggling because regular juggling involves tossing and catching three things with hand-eye coordination. When you're contact juggling, you're only using one object and you're feeling it the whole time. So you don't actually have to look at what you're doing. You feel it. 
Anyways, I think it's time to end this video. I was really excited to show you what's in my backpack, share a little contact juggling with you, promote my playlist section here on my channel, and all of that jazz. So thank you very much for tuning in and watching this video to the very, very end. I know this one's probably a lot longer than it should be just for me showing what's in my backpack, but I appreciate you coming along for the ride. So I'll end this video now with the same words I've been ending all of my videos lately with. Please, folks, remember to never give up. Do your best, stay true to you, and be amazing. Thanks very much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Until then, good night. Bye-bye.